So now we would like to create some vertical columns here. So it's pretty much the same as what we have been doing before. So I'll go quite fast through those uh, steps creating this uh, column. So what is different is that um, instead of using this reference plane, I'm going to create a reference line as we did on the damp proof course. And it's important here, when we move the mouse over here, it will snap to, as we can see down here, lower left corner, you can see what it snaps to. This is the extrusion. If I press tab on my keyboard, then it will take the, the level, the reference level. If we press another time, we will snap to the reference plane. And that is important that it is the reference plane that we snap to. Otherwise, it will not work. So, and this will be the height, and it's important that it's an instance. And let's see if it works. So 500 like this. And we can then create the geometry and log it to the reference planes. One, two, three, four. And on the front, oh, let's go to the right and drag this to this and lock it. If I select the three D geometry, <clears throat> we can um, we can add materials as we as we did in in the previous video. Um, if I go to my project and open that that horizontal timber I made before and open it, control tab, um, in this newest family that I'm doing here under manage, I can say transfer project standards. So coming from this horizontal wooden beam i can say check none and say materials so i take all the materials that are in this family and i can then say only or new only if i then select the geometry here and i go to material pine is now available So I save this, I load this into project, and I can then place this on top of this, or I can rotate it again using my um, spacebar on my keyboard. As you can see here, I can now drag this up and down. I can go to level one and say, <clears throat> I want this to start at the end of this, I can then copy this. So we have this wooden frame um, with an equal distance of, let's say, 600. That was pretty much the same as what we have been doing before. So. So now let's try to twist this, this um, a little bit. Um, we need to have a support beam 
incorporated in those two beams that I have here. So if I go to my beam that I just made, this is the one, the 3D view, I save this. I then go and create this or save this as a, as a new family. So vertical wooden column um, with cut. Then we create a new family using what we have up here, voids. So if I go to right view, <clears throat> Um, here I would like to have a cut in this, uh, so it, it cuts away something of this uh, column that I have. Um, so up here I say void forms and void extrusion. I create uh, an approximate um, rectangle here. Um, since it snaps to this side of, of the beam, I can lock the void to this side. Uh, I press escape and I can then see I, I made it perfectly 45 millit millimeters the, the, the width. Um, the height is supposed to be 195 like this. And we need this to be fixed from a specific distance from the bottom. So first of all, I need to create another dimensions dimension from here to here. I'll just, just go and change the scale here. Select this. This is this is going to be fixed, so no need for for uh, parameters here. So I just lock this. I create a new uh, dimension from here to here and lock that as well. Then I finish this. If I go to a 3D view, you'll see this is our, you can say, invisible void. So when I press escape, it will cut away uh, half of it. So I can then again select it. I can then drag this side by pulling this uh, shape handle until it snaps to the other side here. Remember to log it. Take this, move it to the side, and log it. Then it will cut away um, um, what I have. What I have, uh, yeah, as as expected. So if I go back to to right, I can select my void. Um, if I want this to be variable, so I would like to be able to to change the height uh, in my project, then I can add a dimension from the reference plane up to here. I can select it and say. Um, a new create a new parameter it's supposed to be instance because that could be individual on each beam. So um, we can call that cut height as an instance parameter, and if I save this. I load this into project. Um, I say escape because I want to to replace those two existing beams that I have here. So I press escape. It's in my project now, this family that I have made. So I can go here. I can select those two beams, or oh, sorry, columns that I have here. I can go and replace it with the, with the one with the cut. So now I have um, two of the beams will have this cut. And as you can see, when I select this uh, column here, I can change the cut height. Maybe the support is supposed to be, let's say, 200 millimeter um, above the end of this. 
And then it's possible for me to select this, right click and say create similar. This is um, this is then a nine, 195 by 45 and I can then draw from here to over here to have this beam placed here. It's not 100% correct, so I need to align this. Um, align this face with this face. 